buttermilk apple fritters. Let's go, these are amazing. So first thing you need is a couple of apples. I have one Granny Smith for some reason and one whatever this is, I don't even know. Tart varietals are great, but we've also got buttermilk going into this, which is gonna add a lot of tang. So you know, whatever apples you got knocking around are gonna be fine. Now, the peel on Granny Smith's apples is a waxy abomination in a donut, in my opinion. So first thing I'm gonna do is just take the peel off. No, I cannot peel this in one big long strip, do not ask. Not freaking Meg Ryan. Okay, while we're at it, we might as well go ahead and peel the second apple because the peel on this in a donut is not so great either. I almost never peel my fruits and vegetables. I like to say it's for nutrients, but ultimately it's out of laziness. But in this case, if I'm going to all the work to fry a donut, you better believe there's not gonna be a big chewy bite of peel in there. Okay, Whew. that's a lot of work. Okay, so you can dice these both up, you can grate them both up, but just for excitement, we're gonna dice one and grate the other to give us a little bit of um, contrasting textures in this donut. So in here, we're not cutting towards ourselves like your mom showed you. You just come in here and cut around the core. What do we say about all food scraps? That's a snack. Okay, flat surface. Always find a flat surface on a rolly object. We want this a pretty small dice so it gets nice and soft in the short time that we're frying it. So we're just gonna stack up a few of our apple pieces here. There we go. If you dice these a little bit bigger, it'll be okay. And these ones are not as tall, so I didn't need to cut down the sides of them like I did that first piece. All right, we got diced apples, set them to the side. For this one, we're just gonna take a cheese grater and go to town. Flip it over, don't get the core in there. It's not very tasty. Also don't get your finger in there, that's not very tasty either. This is very satisfying. It's so much easier than grating a hard cheese. Okay, get the edges. Ha ha. Okay, get all the good stuff out of there. And then boom, two apples, apples for our apple fritter. All right, next, we're mixing our dry ingredients here. Now I have my flour in a bowl because I ripped my new bag of flour right down the middle, surprise. Technically it's better to measure it this way too, but we're basically making a pancake batter here and deep frying it, so you don't have to be super accurate. Okay, two cups of flour. This is just all purpose flour. Whole wheat would actually be really yummy too. Okay, to that we are adding a half cup of granulated sugar. We are adding two teaspoons of baking powder. Ooh, nails on a chalkboard. Okay. We are adding a fourth teaspoon of baking soda. You need baking soda because there's acid in the buttermilk and that helps it to activate. A tablespoon of ground cinnamon. I'm not measuring that, just put some in. Cinnamon. A donut. Uh, and then one and a fourth teaspoons of salt. Just kind of dust them off there. This is a coarse kosher salt, so if you have a super fine salt in there, maybe go a little bit less. Whoops, not full. Not two full teaspoons. That would have been unfortunate. There we go. One and a fourth teaspoons. Okay. Whisk it all together. And as always, I totally recommend getting a larger bowl than this. I usually make a giant mess, but this way you guys can see inside. Cause you know, me stirring together flour is so interesting. All right, set that to the side. Next we have our wet ingredients. Why do we do wet and dry ingredients separately? Because when you add liquid and agitation to flour, you start developing gluten strands. Developing some is fine, that creates structure. If you develop too many gluten strands by stirring and stirring and stirring, you're gonna have tough donuts, which really sucks. To this, we are going to add two eggs. Here, we'll get fancy here and see. Ooh, no shell. Big miracle. Once you got your eggs in there, just go ahead and beat them up a little bit. It's easier to do this now than when you've got like six other ingredients in here. Okay, a cup of buttermilk. And this, the buttermilk just takes these apple fritters to another level, it's amazing. This is some vanilla extract I made. It's not quite ready. It could technically sit and infuse for another few weeks, but I think it's fine. So good. It's just a uh, vodka on vanilla beans that you sp I split open and scraped. You could also use Everclear. So I want a full tablespoon of this goodness. Yeah. We're coming up on the holidays. You can also sub bourbon, rum, anything would be delicious. 
Okay, vanilla extract. Last, we have some melted butter here, which is kind of still melted, that's fine. Adding this last, because you don't want to add um, hot melted butter to eggs. You might start to scramble them, which is not a delicious donut in my opinion. Okay, mix it up. So now we're gonna add the wet and the dry ingredients together. Switching to a better tool to manage this. We're looking for like a thick batter. It shouldn't be runny. And it should have this nice kind of brown color. Almost looks like whole wheat flour from that cinnamon. And again, we're trying not to over mix, but you do wanna get all dry parts of flour moistened. Okay, totally your call, because it has raw eggs in there, but I'm gonna give it a taste. Mm, that's good stuff. I almost forgot to add the apple. Go ahead, mix that in. That would have been embarrassing. Apple is apple fritters. I wonder if anyone would have even noticed. I bet you they wouldn't have. All right, stir that apple in. Yeah, baby. All right, my friends, that is it. You've made the batter. If you wanna make this for Christmas morning or something, make this the night before, stick it in the fridge, and all you gotta do the next day is heat up your oil. All right, so super simple to make the glaze. Uh, I've got powdered sugar here. This is a very overpriced bag of organic powdered sugar, but it was all they had. Uh-oh, oh, there it is. Just dust the flour out of your measuring cup. It's the same color anyways, no one's gonna know. All right, so we need one and a quarter cups powdered sugar. Wow, that is some chunky stuff. Okay, one. Yep, that's close enough, a quarter. This is a super easy recipe because everything is in quarters. One and a quarter of powdered sugar, a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. You always wanna salt your sweet items. It really brings out that flavor. Quarter teaspoon of the vanilla extract. And a quarter cup of buttermilk. Whisk, whisk, whisk. You always need less liquid than you think you do when you're making a glaze with powdered sugar. Just whisk until you get all those lumps out. You could also sift your powdered sugar, but uh, so much work. Yeah, yeah. So we got this dirty anyways. Ah, you didn't see that. Mmm, that is delightful. Most excellent. All right, that is our buttermilk glaze. Now that we've finished that, I'm gonna get some oil heating and we're gonna fry those apple fritters. All right, so we have our frying oil heating to about 350 degrees. It's about 340 right now, so we're almost ready to go. I just have an instant read thermometer that tells me the temperature, which is super handy when you're frying on the stove like this. Basically, when you're frying on the stove, cast iron's a great option for this. It not only makes your cast iron super happy, but it's just a great vessel for frying. However, it is a lot harder to control your temperature when you're frying in a pan like this on the stove, rather than if you get one of those little tiny fryers where you just turn the dial to 350 and it stays there. So as you're frying, take note, if it's getting too dark too fast, turn it down. If it's not hot enough, turn it up. It's pretty simple. Okay, so a couple safety things when you are frying in the kitchen especially on a gas stove where you have an open flame and then a lot of hot grease right here. A lid to snuff it in case it were to catch on fire, which will not happen to you, but it could, is your best friend. So snuff it, never put water on a fire. Very, very bad, especially grease fire. Fire extinguisher is a great thing to have. Baking soda is great for grease fire if you spill some grease and have little flames below, but mostly snuff it out. Okay, good, great, safety talk done. So. We are ready to fry. If you don't have an instant read thermometer, you can test your oil with just a little tiny drop of the batter. Ooh, yeah, that sizzle immediately is what we're looking for, okay? So we'll just let him hang out there. Now, I'm just gonna mix this up again a little bit, and I like to use a spoon, two spoons, to get my batter to the fryer, and I prefer to go for little donuts rather than giant ones. They cook faster. It's easier to make sure they get done in the center without burning on the outside and I feel like I can eat about 10 of those and it's the equivalent of one donut, so. Lots of bonuses. And the funnest thing to do with these fritters is to make the weirdest shapes you can so that it hangs onto the frosting. So just get two spoons and kind of drag it out. Ooh, oops, there we go. And then do it again. Yeah. This is where having some of that apple grated, it comes in really handy because it helps the donut stay together better. So we're gonna do one more. You don't wanna crowd your fryer, you need to have room. That's plenty. 
slotted spoon. I actually did a while ago shell out and get a nicer looking slotted spoon to use for these videos. And then I went and melted it in the bottom of my dishwasher. So this is what we have. This old rusty fucker hasn't killed me yet. So with the first fry, what we're doing is we're kind of checking to see how fast is it browning? Is the temperature of my oil still good? Let's check it again. See what we're sitting at. We are sitting at about 365, even after I added cold dough to it, which should have cooled this small amount of oil down a bit. So I'm gonna just drop our flame just a little bit, not too much, and I'm gonna assume that they're gonna brown a little fast, so we'll wanna turn them a little bit more frequently. So just gently flop them over. Look at all the funny edges. It's gonna be great. We're past Halloween, but this one looks like a couple eyeballs there. His hair is sticking straight up. Don't forget about these little tiny ones, because these are the taste testers. Sometimes they don't want to roll over, and that's okay. And now you just wait. Have a snack. I love Cheez-Its. I think snacks are very important while cooking. So we're flopping again. Gorgeous. See how our little nubbins are doing over here. He's definitely done. That's a little tiny bit darker than we're going for for our normal finished fritters. So that's a good one to just keep an eye on if you're not sure if they're done. So we're getting nice and dark on these here. This is looking beautiful. I'm gonna just pick one up. It's where the instant ring thermometer comes in super handy yet again. Let's pop it in there. For breads, we're looking at about 175 to 185. It's gonna be done. This is at 200. He's pretty flat, so he's done. This is also where, it's why they yell at you when you're in working in a restaurant to have your stuff ready before you start cooking. Can't tell you how many times before I had any formal training, I'd be frying or cooking something and you pick it up, you don't have your paper towel ready and you're just, you don't wanna put it back in, where does it go? So just get ready. We'll check the rest of these while we're at it. This is a round fellow, so he might not quite be done. Hmm, he's at 170. I don't know if I trust it. We'll just pull them open. I always trust my thermometers to a point. They are not, no, he's done, excellent, great. All right, we're gonna let those drain off on the paper towels for a minute and the next batch goes in. All right, you guys know the drill at this point, let's glaze some fritters. All right, so I'm just gonna keep frying off batches of these, but I wanna start eating them, so we're gonna glaze a few here. And I do think it's worth noting that the first batch of whatever you're frying typically always goes a little bit faster, the oil's pretty hot. Second batch, the oil's usually a little cooler because you had all that cold product in there usually goes a little bit slower. So, you know, just hotter if you need to, colder if you need to. All right, let's glaze some fritters. So we're gonna make an assembly line here. Okay, give your glaze a stir. So take your fritter with all its fun little ends there and just drop them in, okay? Roll it around, flop it over. Spoon some glaze on it. There he is, Once he's all nice and coated. Pick him up, let the excess strip off. Oh my God, look how good that looks. Okay, into the bowl or plate or whatever. Repeat with the remaining fritters. And you know, while you're at it, you should probably just glaze the little tiny nubbin. Make sure it's cool. Mmm, holy shit, that is good. Yum. Check in with our fritters. Flip them over. Flip the fritter. It's a butte, Clark. Okay, and she goes. Ooh, look at that. Heck, that looks so good. And the fritter will tell you, it will take as much glaze as it needs to take. So don't, you know, like dump a ton off there. Like drain off whatever it wants to give back. You can just get in the nooks and crannies there. Oh, oh no, it broke. I hate that. All right, back to work. Ooh, she done. All right, glaze up the rest of your fritters. This makes a ton of fritters. There's so much batter left. Okay, so you might need to double the glaze recipe if you actually want to cook up all these fritters at once. But I usually like to just do half and then I've got, you know, more batter for later. Mmm! All right, my friends, that is buttermilk apple fritters. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you make these, they are fucking awesome. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos, and if you liked this video, hit that subscribe button for me. I have the neatly written recipe, along with answers to questions like, what the heck do you do with the frying oil when you're done with it, on our website, cleavercooking.com. Enjoy.